the fuck kind of intro was that? It's your returning champion, Elgin Tensity, aka Traptorius of the Kefbis. It is February, which means that by now most of us have already gone tits up on our New Year's resolutions. It's not surprising, considering that more of us resolved to lose weight than we did to have more sex. <laughs> we are all very stupid. They're related goals. When you're a pig, it pays to trim down so you can make more bacon. Obese by giving them critically inadequate care. Unfortunately, the only ones covering it are morning shows, as you will see. Obviously, they're not just talking about this issue on morning shows if you're showing us articles from those bastions of journalistic integrity on your screen, but we'll get to those later. Research about fat shaming at the doctor's office revealing that the way physicians address overweight patients may be doing more harm than good. A big part of the problem is just this tendency by healthcare providers to assume that any symptoms can be blamed on weight. Everything from like a broken ankle to a sinus infection. This was a study done at University of Connecticut Department of Psychology and they were looking at this issue called sizeism, which is the practice of thinking that you can assess someone's health purely by their body. Size. That's a topic from one of the opinion pieces that the host put on screen instead of an actual study. The Huffington Post article said that health and weight aren't perfect synonyms, but in some cases they are. I can tell by the way Tess Holliday's feet bulge out between the straps of her shoes like extruded pasta that she's at a higher risk of heart disease, diabetes, and other health conditions even if she doesn't have them yet. Likewise, I can tell just by looking at a Cessna that it's at a higher risk of crashing if it's carrying Tess Holliday even if it hasn't crashed yet. They found that a lot of these doctors considered people who were overweight or obese to be bad, lazy, <laughs> stupid, worthless. And I can hear them starting their YouTube fitness channels as we speak. Nowhere is size discrimination more alarming than in the medical industry. This is a segment we are calling Thick, Not Sick. Thick means you have fat in the right places. That doesn't describe you if your butt's in the front. Asterisk, don't worry, you can laugh. This was written by fat people. Asterisk, asterisk, the word fat is fine, if you're nice about it. In other words, it's fine if you're fat too. That F pass. You simply cannot know a person's health based purely on looking at them, even if you're a doctor. But it doesn't stop doctors from trying. One study found that doctors spend less time with obese patients, and they may fail to give them medically necessary tests, instead telling them they just need to lose weight. Doctors' fat bias isn't just rude. It's medical negligence that can kill people. But you're okay with misleading your TV audience. It makes sense to call out the obvious health issues and work from there. In this New York Times article, one woman maxed out the scale at her doctor's office, so she had to be weighed at a junkyard, where she found out that she weighed over 500 pounds. Turns out she had lipedema. If you want to learn more about her on our website, too bad, she maxes out the server too. We have a woman who says she was misdiagnosed by doctors because of her weight for years. Rebecca Hiles says she was body shamed and told her size was leading to her health problems, but it turns out she had cancer. Where's the edgelord kid from kindergarten cop when you need him? According to the Jezebel article on the dipshit screen, body fat can hide tumors and other problems. Apparently her tumors are the ninjas and deadbeat dads of tumors. In Virginia, a woman complained to her orthopedist about an ache in her hip. He diagnosed her with something called obesity pain without ever examining her. Or so she said. She later learned she had scoliosis, a condition not caused by obesity. Most of us get checked for that shit when we're kids. Doctors aren't perfect, and a lot of them are Nick Riviera tier. But if you're the first 500 pound chungus to waddle into someone's office, then consider the weight loss recommendations part of the learning curve. Even when doctors try to treat obese patients as people, insurance companies may require them to bring up their patient's weight or risk being denied reimbursement. That is awful. If you really think that they should hide patients glaring health issues from the insurance companies, then I can only imagine how suspect your tax returns look. And I thought the scariest thing fat people dealt with was insulting plus-size clothes. Oh, well, that is a real t-shirt being sold to real fat people who deserve better. We finally agree on something. Also, no complaints about how plus-size clothes cost more? Someone needs to reboot this NPC. I don't think it's working right. Diets don't work, assholes! Cancel that IT request. Studies that show diets don't work. UCLA researchers found that the majority of people who lose weight on a diet regain it all within five years. The Huffington Post article said the same thing, except yo-yo diets aren't the same as sustainable ones that are part of a healthy lifestyle. Those do work if you have the willpower. 
Alas, having the willpower to address your obesity problem is much harder than surrounding yourself with other fat fucks and pretending you don't have a problem. Bad treatment discourages patients from seeking care. Obese women are more likely to delay mammograms and pap smears, which is partially responsible for the fact that they're more likely to die from breast and cervical cancers. They delayed dieting and exercising, which is why they're obese in the first place. Even the most fat-friendly doctor with greased-up double doors and junkyard scales can't avoid bringing up the link between obesity and cancer. In the news business, they actually call this headless B-roll butts and guts. It's mean. I mean, at the very least, don't film the lady wearing a one-of-a-kind solar system vest. <laughs> that lady definitely recognizes her awesome space vest, and so do all her friends. <laughs> That space vest really accentuates her constant expansion. If you're a fat fucko, then listen to your doctor. Not Samantha B, Brittany D, or any of these other lying sacks of shit who promise the keys to a better life but don't deliver anything. You'll be just as fat and miserable as you were before, maybe more so. While obesity raises your risk of getting cancer, malignant wastes of flesh on social media and TV will try to ruin your life whether you're fat or not. Zero! Like the video and subscribe to the channel, now.